There were two brothers, and they were both extremely corrupt. They deceived everybody. They were crooked to the core. They even abused their families. But they belonged to the same church, and they put themselves across as the perfect Christians. Well, one of the brothers died. And the one who didn't went to the pastor to talk to him about the funeral, and he said, you know, I want you to tell the people what a saint my brother was, and if you do this, I will write a check to you that will take care of that new building you want to put up. So the pastor, of course, was a good pastor. He said, certainly, took the check. Then the funeral the next day, the pastor just went on and on how evil this brother was. But finally he concluded, but compared to his brother, he was a saint. <laughs> Hopefully not a true story. But in real life, often at funerals, we're made to be saints. Few people are, we know that. Years ago, in one of my first parishes, one of the parishioners said to me, Father, I want you to do my homily at the funeral because the pastor always makes everybody a saint. I'm not a saint. I want you to tell it like it is. Well, she hasn't died yet, so I haven't had the honor to really tell, what it, tell her what it's like, what it is. She was colorful, not a saint, but very colorful. But aren't we all simply colorful? That there are many parts to ourselves, and we certainly would like to be considered saints, but I think deep down most of us realize we are not. In that we are all colorful, most of us have an angel on this shoulder and a devil on this shoulder. Now in the Gospel of Matthew this weekend, Jesus sends the twelve out to drive out the demons, to confront the evil in the world and to bring goodness to it. We certainly know there are many demons in our world today, many, much evil. Few days go by without some horrific killing, whether it's in a foreign country or Charleston or right in our own neighborhoods. Last weekend, what were there, 10 or 11 shootings right in Syracuse and Chicago, there were 10 or 11 murders. The experience of Charleston has certainly awakened us to the reality that racism is probably one of the largest demons in our nation. If we thought that racism was eradicated, then the events of the last few weeks and months are a stark reminder of the reality of racism that ex still exists all around us. So the demons that Jesus talks about in the Gospel today are smacking us right in the face. And we fool ourselves, we are delusional, if we believe that these demons are all out there, all external to us. Kurt Vonnegut once said, delusion is imagination with a social disease. So we always have to begin with ourselves. Alexander Solzhenitsyn once wrote, if only it were all so simple, if only there were evil people somewhere, insidiously committing evil deeds and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. And who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart? And David Brooks tells us, we are all splendidly endowed and deeply flawed. We all have certain talents and certain weaknesses. And certainly most of us, certainly myself included, would prefer not to look at our own prejudices, our own racism, our own shadows, our own weaknesses. As one psychologist wrote, we have an unlimited ability to ignore the truth about ourselves. So the reality is that we all have demons inside of us, that we have to struggle with our whole lives, that we have to acknowledge them, and we have to be in constant battle with them. Our selfishness, 
our greed, our ego, our prejudices, our racism, our lustful desires. Harry Emerson Fosdick once said, the beginning of worthwhile living is the confrontation with ourselves. One of the most frightening aspects of the tragedy of 9-11, beyond the horrors of the attacks themselves and the lives lost, was to read the diary of the lead hijacker, Mohammed Atta. This is what he wrote in his diary. God, I trust in you. I lay myself in your hands. Allow me to glorify you in every possible way. Purify my heart, clean it from all earthly matters. If God supports you, no one will be able to defeat you. Shocking words from a man who killed thousands of people. An evil man with such devout and spiritual words. So how does it happen that he committed these acts believing that he was doing them in the name of God? He believes he is good and we are evil. Or certainly in our history, history, we only need to look back at the Nuremberg trials. We all know the excuse that was given. I was simply carrying out orders. So we all have to admit that we can very easily fool ourselves and certainly rationalize our behaviors. What were the headlines this week? Cosby's public moralist stance leads to release of documents. Wow. The title character in the comic strip Broomhilda is an ugly yet somehow lovable witch. Her friend is Irwin, the troll, and he has all the innocence and the naivete needed to be truly attractive. So one day, Broomhilda asks, she says, Irwin, what would be the best way to make the world better? So Irwin thinks for a moment and he says, start with yourself. Give up your bad habits and evil pleasures. Then when you're good, you'll stand as a shining example to others. So Broomhilda swiftly responds, ah, uh, what's the second best way to make the world better? We're a lot like Broomhilda. It's very hard for all of us to take a good look at ourselves first, to face our own prejudices, our own racism, to acknowledge what Martin Sheen's character, Captain Willard, if you remember that phenomenal movie, Apocalypse Now, his character said, there is a conflict in every human heart between the rational and irrational, between good and evil. The good does not always triumph. Sometimes the dark side overcomes. And Gandhi once said, the only devils in this world are those running around in our own hearts. And that is where all our battles should be fought. But there's a lot of good news, too. And the good news is this, that we don't do this alone. That our struggle against our weaknesses, our shadows, our racism, our, our prejudice is not solitary. David Brooks talks about redemptive assistance from outside. And this is what he means when he's talking about redemptive assistance from outside. He's talking about the church. He's talking about Eucharist. He's talking about our penance rite. As we come together and we begin our Eucharist, we all face ourselves and seek forgiveness. We acknowledge our prejudices. We acknowledge our need for God to help us and our need for the support of everyone in the community to help us be better people. To first root out the demons inside each one of us as a start to rule out, to root out the evil in the world. So in Matthew's Gospel this weekend, Jesus sent the apostles to root out not just what's external to us, but those things that follow us around. 
the advice given to Broomhilda is really good. Each one of us really needs to start with ourselves.